so today we've the elephant beat washer. Uh, it fully destones, pre cleans, washes, and chops whole beat or chop beat if you want for delivery. Right, so it has its own engine, has it? Yeah, it has its own engine on board, an 85 kilowatt JCB engine. Um, the engine or the machine is pulled around with an Arctic truck. It has a full, full onboard hydraulic system, so you pull it into place and let down the jack legs and you're ready to wash straight away. Um, if you want to wash whole beat, you have the option. If you want to wash chop beat, you have the option. Okay, so it's doing all, all those functions in one? Yeah, it's all in, in the one unit. Yes. And say, you know, with different types of beat and different times of the year, you know, how much waste or dirt is on beat typically? Or so on our own trials we did this year, we got an average of 16% um, dirt tear. Now that's between stones and clay on the beat. Um, so when we wash the beat, you could say for every 100 tonne, we're getting 16 tonne of dirt out of it. Um, now that varies. Last year we tried cleaner loader beat, and even with beat gone over a cleaner loader, we can still manage to get about 3.5% three, three dirt off the beat. Okay. Yeah, so I suppose that is a big consequence for the farmer buying it, that he's buying clean beef with a machine like this. Exactly, so we've seen some farmers buying, roughly speaking, anywhere between 100 and 400 tonne of beef, a dairy farmer. Um, if you were buying 100 tonne of beef on a, an average year and you're, you're, and you're not washing it, you're buying 16 tonne of dirt, and at 45 euro a ton, which is selling roughly at this year, that's 720 euro you've just paid in a year for dirt. Now, if you're up at 400 ton um, of beet in one year, you're up at 2,800 or 2,900 of dirt you've paid for that feed. So it pays to wash it. Yeah, and, and I, I presume also for the livestock, they're not ingesting a lot of uh, tear and yes, soil material. So you have to wash for two reasons. First reason is it builds up in the cow's stomach over time, the dirt, because she gets it hard to pass it. Um, and the performance of the cow dwindles over a number of months or years. The second reason is if you feed dirty beet, you get an exposure to iron uh, or molybdenum. And the problem with that is it causes copper deficiency in cows. So straight away, every, every agronomist or feed nutritionist will recommend to clean it or wash it. Yeah, very good. So just describe the process here. So when the beet is loaded, what's the first stage there when it's loaded? So the first stage on the washer is the beet falls into the pre-cleaner and the loading hopper. So what this is, it's a web area with a side discharge elevator. Now the side discharge elevator takes away the, the heavy clay. So basically that's to allow the water last longer. If you didn't have that, the water would basically get dirty very quick. Right. The beet goes from there into a destoning chamber. Now the destoning chamber is a cyclone of water and the way that works is there's paddles spinning around creating a whirlpool. The stones get sucked into the center of the whirlpool and there's a specific volume of water being pumped in underneath with an in internal pump to allow the beet to float. The beet then floats across into a washing cylinder and as it's washed all the clay settles to the bottom of the machine and the beet goes through the washing cylinder and up the elevator and out where you have the option of washing whole or chopped beet. Now as this has all taken place, when the stones and the clay settle to the bottom of the machine, there's a scraper floor pulling out all the stones and clay, so it's, it's cleaning its own water as it washes. Right. And say, in terms of water then, are you, cleaning, are you putting in new water or clean water? How often? Or... Depends on the beet. If you're doing freshly harvested sugar beet before Christmas, we did a trial in France last uh, late November, and we got 200 tonne on the one water once we had a fresh water supply on the elevator, so we were able to keep the foam off the beet, because as you wash sugar beet, a foam develops on the top of the water, so you need to keep fresh water just spraying on the elevator, and we've added a spray nozzle to that machine to allow you to do it. If you were washing very dirty beet and you just wanted to continuously wash, you might only get 100 tons out of the water. But what most farmers will do is they'll wash a load of a day and let the water settle, and every morning they'll come out and turn on the scraper floor so the, the sediment has settled to the bottom and they clean the water every mo morning so they might get two to three hundred tonne out with the one water. Um, so you mentioned foam, what's the negative of the foam? What's, what problem the, does that cause? The foam has no negative whatsoever other than visual so for someone selling fodder beet the foam actually sticks to the beet and goes up the elevator on the beet and into the trailer. 
and that's why we have the spray nozzle on the, on the elevator, just so you can rinse the foam off. Okay. What capacity of water do you need for the washing cycle here? You need 15,000 litres or 3,250 gallons. And you get roughly with that machine there, you get anything from 80 to 100 tonnes per hour. So Jason, you're a Kildare based company? Yeah, based in Rathangan County, Kildare. And so did you start making equipment for the Irish market or how did the business start? So basically we started back in the early 90s making farm machinery. Uh, Simon Cross, the owner of the company, my father, he's a Massey Ferguson mechanic by trade and then he went into making machinery. Um, after he started manufacturing machinery, we got a contract to manufacture under licence for Armour Salmon, or the Irish Sugar Factory. So all the cleaner loaders and beet washers that you see with an Armour Salmon sticker on it were made by us. Um, with the closure of the Sugar Factory then in 2007, we had to find another market. And the secondary market was obviously fodder, which we were always doing in small quantities all along. And then we went into the biogas industry, where we're washing sugar beet for biogas. Now, unfortunately, there's none of that in Ireland yet, but it's mostly out on the continent and the UK. OK, so was it a hard adjustment when the beet industry shut down here? It was a huge, like, we would have taken probably a 70% reduction in, in turnover overnight. So we had to find another market to develop. Now, we had another range of machinery that we had to push, but our, our main product was beet washers, and it was taken from us in 2007 overnight. Now, we were lucky enough that the biogas industry was only starting in Germany, so they figured straight away in Germany when they tried to feed in sugar beet that there were stones in the beet and it was a problem. It was blocking the, bump, the pumps and the digesters. So straight away, the machines we were making to wash sugar beet for sugar factories worked for the sugar beet for the biogas plants. So it sort of, as it happened, that started in 2009-10, so there wasn't much of a shutdown period on the washers for us. Okay. You're also exporting to New Zealand, I hear? We are, yeah. We have a few beat washers, tankers, um, ring rollers, different machinery working in New Zealand. We have an importer in New Zealand. Uh, we're also selling our main... Until this year, I suppose, our main industry was the UK that slowed down a bit with Brexit. Now, it is picking back up with, I suppose, Brexit as we've managed to find ways to export. And we're selling a lot out to the likes of the United States, the Middle East, uh, Germany and France will be our biggest markets at the moment. Yeah, so a great success story, really. Yeah, well, it's, it's going well. Yes, yeah, and uh, so you have some vacancies for apprentice safe? We have, yeah, so this year, every year we take on a number of apprentices. This year we're taking on, I suppose, seven, we have positions for seven apprentices. Um, now we figured it's, it is a difficult year for getting staff between the virus and Look, a lot of people that are in jobs don't know what's happening with their jobs. So we have plenty of vacancies for apprentices as well as qualified staff. We have just built a new engineering department in the company and we're take, we've taken on two engineers this week. So I suppose the expansion in the company is going well at the moment. Yeah, great. Great to hear.